every instrument it has a, a set of strengths and and weaknesses it's up to to me to identify the personality or face of the instrument and be able to tell how much of it is is being blocked help it it come out and really shine its best my name is Ryan Gallagher and I'm a musician but am I only a musician Let's find out. I was studying music in, at Fredonia State 2012, around the time I graduated. I started getting really into early music, Baroque music, that kind of thing. I found this CD, actually, and I was reading the liner notes, like, oh, dude, like, these guys are, are pretty good, no McGill, they have early music there. And then I had my, my modern cello that I'd been playing for a long time and decided to slap gut strings on it. And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, oh, I'm ready to play Baroque cello now, and it sounded horrible. I couldn't get any anything out of it, and so it came that I I met uh, a guy named William Monocle, one of the the great uh, pioneers in early instruments, and uh, he was able to improve this this instrument so much. He was able to get underneath this problem unlike anyone else and kind of see how this was all part of a system that related me, the feeling of playing the instrument and the, the sound of it to the, the audience all at once. I told him I was looking for schools that I could study this music at. and uh, I told him that I've, I heard of, of Susie Knapper and he's like oh I, Susie I've been working on her instruments since she was a little girl uh. and so I went and uh, it, it turned out really great I got uh, into the school here and eventually doing a doctoral research project Hank Knox came to me and uh, he said, Ryan, the McGill just got money from a donor who wants it to be spent on a basse de violon. I was like, well, how about uh, I make you one? I'd been in contact with a man named Nate Tabor, who was gracious enough to take me under his wing with a little apprenticeship that led to to us making this this instrument for McGill University. It has uh, a huge, huge personality and and magic inside it that uh, that I think really comes through. It almost sounds evil in a way when you when you hear it
historically the the bass member of the of the violin family the the cello the modern cello is a bass violin uh, but it's it's uh, smaller than what we have here the strings are a lot different they're these really thick um, gut strings usually the bottom two strings of a baroque cello are wound with a silver or copper wire they will express they'll make the instrument express i think more sincerely what that instrument can do so as far as making the the instrument in spain with with nate neither of us really had like a concrete plan of how to actually physically cut the the wood and create a, a geometry for this instrument it's not like we could find a, a blueprint or, or plan of this anywhere there are instruments of course in in museums but the vast majority of these have been altered so much over the course of time that uh, we really had to do a lot of of speculation and research to find out how such a, a non-standard instrument today would have been um, invented from the ground up. When I started um, studying in Montreal, uh, Bill Monocle, he retired unexpectedly. I was like, shoot, you know, who, who do I go to now? Um, like, this is a, a disaster. When I was working with Nate, and he said in a joking kind of way, dude, all you need is a workbench and a website, and you're all set. So I started my own workshop and committed to making uh, every instrument sound its best. Thank you.